What's up guys, I'm Becca and welcome back to Tidal Gardens. In my previous video here on this channel, I mentioned that I was a media studies major. So I figured as a little Earth Day treat, I would give you guys my top five media stories within the last year or so that relate to corals. So without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, so the first story I want to talk about involves a man by the name of Dr. Jamie Craggs. Dr. Craggs is an aquarist from the UK, as well as the aquarium curator for the Horniman Museum and Gardens in London and founder of Project Coral. They even got to meet him last year when he visited London. Dr. Craggs' mission, you may ask? To be able to get corals to spawn in captivity and raise them to full-size colonies. This is the type of spawning that triggers corals to release gametes into the ocean simultaneously once a year. This is something that is common with the colonies making up the Great Barrier Reef. Now his research has been active on this topic since 2012, but it wasn't until 2019 when he spoke about his progress in great length at MACNA. The reason that this research is considered a breakthrough is because coral spawning doesn't happen very easily in captivity, but sometimes may happen through happy accident. This is due to the corals need to follow the moon cycle and have a specific change in temperature in order to trigger these events. So the fact that this is now able to be done within a lab is great when you look at the bigger picture of repopulation. So far, Dr. Craggs has done a majority of his tests on different kinds of Acropora with amazing results. But another thing he has discovered from his experiment is that the corals can be crossbred in a lab using the gametes that get released from similar Acropora species. The outcome is coral that looks to be cut in half and fused together, which is pretty cool, and Craggs says that creating hybrids is also a possibility. In late 2017, Craggs and Project Coral teamed up with the Florida Aquarium across the Atlantic to help with repopulation, which leads me to my next story. Using methods started by Project Coral, the researchers at the Florida Aquarium located in Tampa Bay, Florida, were able to reproduce the endangered Atlantic pillar coral, August of 2019. This is launching a larger effort, rebuilding the Florida Reef Trapped, the biggest reef along North America. Plans to start rebuilding the reef started December of 2019 and will probably take decades to complete, but starting this project is a huge win itself for the coral community. The plan, led by Florida Aquarium and NOAA, consists of multiple phases to ensure the coral thrive in their new environment outside of the lab. The first phase of this plan involves introducing long spine urchins and California king crabs to the area to get rid of any algae that can be potentially harmful to the corals as they grow. The next phase is to introduce more rapidly growing corals to restore the reefs to an average of 15% uh, coral cover across the seven different sites along the reef. These kinds of coral include elkhorn, star, brain, pillar, and staghorn corals. Next phase is to continue planting these corals along with some slower growing corals that will have a better chance of thriving now that they are surrounded by the corals that were planted previously. Finger and blade corals make up this category. At the end of this phase, coral cover across the seven different sites should reach 25%. Before we go on to the next Earth Day story, have you guys ever had corals spawn in your tank? Here at Tidal Gardens we have, but the reef tank itself usually filters it all out by the morning as if it had never happened. Sad. Who knows, maybe we can set up a small lab in the future. Anyway, moving on. You may have noticed that the feel good part of this video all happened in 2019. 2020? Not so much. Lost in all the news of seemingly the entire Australian continent burning down, 46 million acres to be exact, lately the Great Barrier Reef has undergone bleaching on a massive scale to the rise in sea temperature caused by global warming. However, there's a team of scientists in Australia looking to see if they can stop this using a little genetic modification. At the Australian Institute of Marine Science, or AIMS for short, there's a group of marine biologists working in the National Sea Simulator in Townsville, Australia to try and prevent coral bleaching from happening by working on networks within the coral themselves. There are four major lines of research being tested currently, and those are one, crossbreeding corals to create heat tolerant hybrids, which could boil down to mixing strains of the same species or mixing two different species altogether. Two, genetically engineering corals and the algae that reside within them. 
Three, rapidly evolve hardier strains of corals and algae by subjecting them to heated environments within the lab. And four, manipulate the coral's microbiome. Marine biologist at Ames, Madeline Van Open, says that there are no processes here that are unnatural. These studies are mainly speeding up those natural processes to prepare corals for what is happening to the Earth right now. With the studies being conducted since 2015, corals have recently been showing slightly more resistance in 31 degrees Celsius water than normal being around 27, 28 degrees Celsius than before. Bleaching is still occurring, but at a much slower pace. Much like what is happening at the Florida Aquarium, this study will take years upon years to complete due to the coral's maturity and reproductive rates. But this is still a step in the right direction when it comes to coral conservation and preparing for the inevitable future. Moving on to the next news story, if you are living under a rock, there's this thing going around that Google really doesn't like people to talk about. And if we do say the magic word, we run the risk of getting this video demonetized. And Than really does not want that. So let's just call this world event Modelo 19. <laughs> anyway, needless to say, this is a major disruption at every level imaginable. How it is affecting the aquarium trade specifically is one. In most states, there's a stay-at-home order. On one hand, pet stores and fish shops can stay running because there's usually an animal husbandry carve-out in these stay-at-home orders because someone has to look after the animals. On the other hand, the effect of this on stores is really strange. Having talked to a bunch of other stores, it is total feast or famine out there. There are some places that really relied on retail traffic and are seeing huge drops in revenue while other places are reporting great business as people are bored at home and are spending more time and money on their tanks. That is the word on Main Street anyhow. Two, on the global supply end of the equation, those same concerns about the spread of Mandelo caused a handful of exporters to close down temporarily. So long story there, there's simply not as many places that are actively exporting corals. Three, on the global logistics end of the equation, Modelo has really messed with things. It is really tricky to get flights to ship tons of corals. Airlines are cutting back on the number of flights, and I think they are prioritizing other cargo to be moved around for obvious reasons. Also, flights and cargo are getting scrutinized more than ever, and some of these shipments are getting stuck in customs for two, three, maybe even five days. Needless to say, that's not going to go well for the corals in transit. It is hard to say how that would affect things in your local market, but I can't imagine it not having an effect at all. Even if your favorite store is still open and still allowing you to come over, I would not be surprised if the tanks are a little sparse given the supply is constricted. Now, there's something to be learned from my final web story of today. Don't self-medicate. There's been some news, debate, and scandal about an anti-malarial drug called hydroxychloroquine and its efficiency on Modelo 19. I'm not a pharmaceutical chemist, so I'm not going to weigh in on that debate. But you know what doesn't definitely work? Chloroquine. <laughs> now, some of you aquarists may already know that chloroquine is also used to treat parasites that may attach to fish in aquariums. This may be confusing to some people who saw this on the news. This was definitely confusing to one couple in particular. The couple who remained nameless from Arizona were rushed to the hospital after consuming chloroquine. And I don't mean the anti-malarial drug. The wife had been using chloroquine to treat her koi fish. Being in their 60s, the couple really didn't want to get sick from the Modelo, so they mixed some of the chloroquine with some water and they drank it. Not 20 minutes later did the couple fall dreadfully ill. The woman began vomiting while her husband started experiencing respiratory problems. After getting rushed to the hospital, the husband tragically died from cardiac arrest, and the wife is expected to recover. So despite the drugs having the same name, they have very different effects, which is why you should only receive chloroquine from a medical professional. And make sure you always do your research. So as you can see, ocean life is still a big part of science today, as well as our daily lives, and it's great to see that such big innovations are being made to keep it that way. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to Tidal Gardens on YouTube, as well as other social media. <laughs> see you later, guys!